Taryn, what's with the opera? It's been two months now. What's going on? And you've said nothing up to now? Well, you know, I like to keep things to myself and I like to expose oh, too much. I love it. I mean, wide open spaces and opera. It's inspirational. Wide open spaces. No music. What would you like to listen to instead? I mean, uh, I love opera, so... Look, I've got a bit of a soft spot for early 90s hip-hop. Maybe a little bit of Nina Cherry. Mm -hmm. And if you know, if I'm having a long bath and wanting to fall asleep and not wake up, a little bit of Chardonnay. Okay. Don't get sexy on me. <laughs> I'm sorry, Rich, today we're going to continue with the opera. Just bring on the Barry White, I say. I told you, don't get sexy on me. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Beautiful. <coughs> Hi. Hello there, welcome. Hello. Robin. Hello. I'm Robin. Karen. Pleased to meet you, Karen. Thank Richard. you. Hello, Richard. How are you? Welcome to Tiki Trout Farm. Oh, awesome. Fantastic. Well, word's definitely got around. So we've heard about Tiki Trout Farm for a very long time, so pretty excited to be here. Mm. Shall we go and have a wander? Absolutely. Come Thank you. Hello, Joe. So, Robert. Where was the original spring? I'm guessing uphill? Or... Yeah, just up the hill a bit. And they originally uh, you know, capped that gushing water coming out of the ground. So it is a true artesian and it sits at sort of 600 degrees all year. So, really? Wow. Yeah, yeah. The fish like everything constant. They don't, they don't think it's too hot, they don't think it's too cold. So what my dad did originally in 45 was a very creative thing to create the harnessing of the water. Harness uh, the water and then have a business idea attached to that. Yeah. It's very creative. Yeah, yeah. and uh, from there we've uh, for the landscaped and been more creative in, in 85 onwards. Because originally it was for grazing cattle and sheep, is that Absolutely. right? Absolutely, yeah. it's a traditional yeah. farm. Traditional yeah. farming, yeah. So that is really branching out and look where it's got you now, 30 years later. Amazing. It's a booming trade. I mean, the whole idea of being able to come catch your own fish. Mm. I can't wait to have a go at that, but I'm really interested Good. in cooking with your product. Um, yeah. And I'm looking at doing a smoked trout salad with potatoes and cornichons and vinegar. Wonderful. Quite simple, gorgeous and light. And it's the right time of day, coming into lunchtime. Yes. <laughs> Rich, what I'm going to do today is use the tukey trout in a potato salad because these two ingredients together are a marriage made in heaven. Now, Rich, I'm using quite a few chat potatoes. They yeah. have a really thin skin, and they're a great thing to put in a potato style salad. They don't salad. fall apart, that's why I've No, always... they don't fall apart at all. Okay. But what I do is, I just cut them up in a s slices like this, rather than trying to cook them whole, and then pop them into water, and I've got some cooked here. Don't you love this background where we are today? I do. It's the, it's the Lawton and Campaspe Valley that we're in. We do get spoilt with we our are. kitchens, our pop-up kitchens, don't we? So, Rich, to make a great potato salad, you need to cook the potatoes right yeah. through. The other secret is to dress them while they're warm. I've always been very scared to add, like, too much oil. We're going to have to get you over those fears. Vinegar. All right. Potatoes and vinegar and oil. Sublime. Tangy on the tongue. A great base for a simple salad like this. All right. And then you drizzle in, yeah. Yeah. Show them potatoes. And if you could grind over a little bit of pepper. Pepper. My mouth is actually salivating from the vinegar and oil. That's how much I love hot dressed uh. potatoes. That's beautiful. And some salt. OK. All right. Let's get on to the trout. Now, Rich, I'm going to get you yep. to take the skin off All right. and then remove the flesh and try and leave the bones separate from the flesh. All right. Let's see how this goes, Karen. Well, Rich, I bet Robert's really happy with that rain that's coming in. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. So now it's just a matter of maybe running your knife down the middle down there. Down there, yeah. yeah. And then just pulling the flesh off gently. OK. Doing a great job there, Rich. Awesome. Next, I'm going to add some always fresh capers. Yep and cornichons. And what I love about Always Fresh Capers and cornichons and all their products is that they source premium products from all over the world. Rich, I'm going to add a little hint or a kick of heat to this salad. Totally optional, but I love green chilli. I do too. A little bit of green chilli over the top. Okay. And Rich, we're going to add a little bit of dill and a couple of spring onions. So just fronds like this? Yeah. Yeah, cool. OK. 
Okay, that's okay. probably enough. I'll put a little bit of spring onion on. It's I have great. got a couple more things to drop on top, okay. just to enrich it and take it to another level. And that's always fried aiming. You egg. always aim so high. It's great. A fried egg, or one or two fried eggs dropped on top. Okay. Not only add a richness to the salad, but look fabulous as well. And I'm going to do a yolk. Yeah. Just oh, fried I, yeah. for you. No white for me. Into the pan. Yeah. So, Rich, you can tell those eggs are really fresh because the whites haven't just run everywhere. You've got two layers with the whites. So That's why one. some people find it really hard, I reckon, to poach eggs is because if you haven't got a really, really fresh no. egg... Forget it's about just, it. It just it's goes... All over. It's all over, yeah. <laughs> you look like a really bad breakfast chef. <laughs> OK, Rich, these are ready. Are so, we going straight on? Yeah, I'll go straight on. Now, can you have a little bit of a fossick, a fossick? through your trout just to make sure you haven't missed any bones? All right. And your little egg. Oh, here comes yolk. mine. Right. And here's your side of the salad. <laughs> the rest is mine. <laughs> and Rich, just over the top. Over the top. With the trout. Looking good. Okay, over there. Uh, a little bit more pepper. And just to take this trout and potato salad. Another notch higher. We're going to add a touch like that of and that goat's curd. And it's like Meredith, we're climbing. Meredith goat's curd. Yeah. And yeah. then, you know, it's really just a matter of scooping and then doing a bit of the. Like dollop little dollops. Like that. Yeah. There you have it, my right. tukey trout and potato salad with always fresh capers, cornichons, and Meredith goat's curd. I've got a great idea. This would go so well with a glass of Matua Sauvignon Blanc from New Zealand. What do you reckon? Yeah, let's okay. crack it open. All right. Wow. That is just passion fruit and gooseberry all over. Yeah. You can feel the passion, I can tell you. Cheers, Rich. <laughs> Tricky trout. Oh, I really do have to get back to my okay. trout. Potato salad. Your potatoes are beautiful. Thank you. Karen, something burning? Yes! Oh my god! It's the broccoli, but I'm burning it on purpose. I'm charring it in a dried pan. Flip the broccoli yeah. over, and then just to finish the cooking process, I still want it crispy in this salad. Yeah. Um, I'm going to add a tablespoon of this water, which is going to bubble up. This just steams them a little bit and finishes the cooking process. We don't want it cooked right through. We still want a bit of crispness to it. OK, buckwheat soba noodles. The soba noodles take around five or six minutes in okay. water. So how do we do our dressing? Uh, let's do it in a little bowl, Rich. Right. You need a cool. couple Voila. of teaspoons of spiral toasted sesame oil. Sure. Just love the flavour of sesame. Yep, yep that's sweet. enough. Um, a couple of tablespoons of the spiral ponzu. OK. And while you're doing okay. that, I'm just peeling some ginger, Rich, because the skin's quite brown and I find it a little bit too chewy. Now, I wish I could tell you lots of things about ponzu. I don't remember. <laughs> I'm using ponzu because I like the flavour of the soy with the citrus yeah. married together, but I still want you to boost it with a bit more citrus rich okay. and squeeze half a lemon in there. Okay. Look at your knife skills, Karen. If you didn't want to do it this way, you could just get a microplane or the fine side of a grater mm. and grate the ginger into your dressing. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to just throw yeah. it in there, like that. And I will add a little bit of extra virgin oil as well, just to soften that dressing off. Rich, just give that a little bit of a stir. OK. Rich, the noodles. The noodles, you ready. get the noodles onto the curry. I got carried away with the dressing, you know. OK, just pouring these off. And then the trick is to plunge them straight into some cold water, yep. which you have there. And this just stops the cooking process immediately. Awesome. So we'll just chop this broccoli up a little bit and then pop it into this bowl here. And I've got some spring onion. I'm just going to slice, Rich, on the angle. 
Okay. Throw that in on the broccoli. What next? Coriander. Coriander. Yep. And then pour over half the dressing. Lovely. And some sesame seeds. And this is just reinforcing the flavour of the sesame oil, but also adding texture to the salad, which we love dearly. It's looking great. It is looking good. So yeah. the idea of putting half the dressing on, Rich, is to just marinate the um, broccoli a bit, just so it soaks it up. Yeah. And then we'll toss through the buckwheat noodles and pour the rest of the dressing over the top. That's where it comes in. So I'm just going to give them a bit of a toss. You can see the broccoli's almost sucking up the yeah. dressing, isn't it? Look. Yeah. yeah. So have you got a plate there? We can okay, all plate that? it up now. Pop the buckwheat noodles. Do you want them all on? Pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah, well, yep. Just, Three quarters. Yeah. On like that. Gorgeous. Lovely. And then we'll pile on the broccoli. So Rich, now pour over the rest of that dressing. Okay. Put on some more sesame seeds. And another thing I thought I'd use right. is um, some spiral nori just snipped over the top. Okay. Texture and flavour. This is going to be the biggest powerhouse. Yeah. How crispy is that spiral nori? OK. Powerhouse salad of charred broccoli and buckwheat soba with a sesame and ginger dressing. Mm-mm. OK. Are we done? Let's we go just have do lunch, this. Rich. Yeah. <laughs> now, Rich, I really think we should bring a second plate next time. Oh, I don't mind sharing, though. <laughs> it's good. What do you reckon we give um, fishing a go? Does trout fishing a go? Yeah. For sure. Mm, let's see who oh. wins. It'll, it'll, it'll oh. either be the trout or us. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the trout will definitely win. The trout will definitely win. Because I've mm. never caught anything. Mm. Never have I. The only thing I caught was a trout that jumped into the back of a dinghy on a family holiday. <laughs> <laughs>
The other thing I sometimes think about when I'm making curry paste like this, Rich, is you go, if you're going to the trouble of having all these ingredients on hand, yeah. I often make a double batch. Yep. And then use half for the recipe and put the other half in a Ziploc bag or a container and throw it in the freezer. And then you've got curry paste on hand anytime you're feeling flamboyant and like you need a pork curry. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to fry this off. A little bit of peanut oil. A little bit of peanut oil. And now we can just cook it off. And are you just really searing the curry paste yeah. on the meat? And yeah. Then, so we're not so necessarily that's... browning it up too much. No. no. Rich, that smells glorious. It's smelling great. All right, there we go. Last little bun. Hey, Rich, the spring onion. All right. Let's just chop them up and we'll add them in. All right. Oh. God, it smells good. Got a little bit of colour. OK, I'm going to put all yep. our pork meat in here. Fabulous. I'll follow in with the spring onions. Yep. Quite truthfully, these could have gone into the paste, but it can go in now as yeah. well, yeah? All right, there we are. Great. So I've got a little bit of coconut water, about 500 mils. I'm going to put a little bit in here. Joys of working outside. And then I'm going to oh, get all that curry paste. Just scrape the curry paste off the bottom, yes. Yeah. Don't want to lose any of that, because it is all flavour. It is all about this paste. The rest of that 500 mils of coconut water. So the last things that we're going to add is the bruised cardamom. Pods in. Pods in. And I'm also going to put in fognap for you chicken stock. These guys. And lime leaves, basically. Kaffir lime leaves, how good are they? Seriously. Mm. Karen, I know you can't eat this if you're on a low FODMAP diet, but I just love using this stock in everything I make. Our lime leaves. Lime leaves. A little bit of a stir. So how long, Rich, will that cook for? Look, I reckon that'll take about three hours. Hmm. But what does one do for two and a half to three hours on a trout farm? Well, I'm feeling lucky, Rich. Well, I hope you are. I hope the fish are feeling luckier <laughs> than I am. <laughs> I'm going in, Rich. OK, go. Oh. Whoa. Go, Karen. Why? I'm a natural. <laughs> if you're on a low FODMAP diet, you can't eat this recipe we're making today because many of the ingredients, like onions and garlic, aren't suitable. But you can still enjoy curries. FODMAP for you make amazing FODMAP friendly curries and sauces. I always keep some in the kitchen at home and always take them when I travel. Oh! Oh! Oh, <laughs> oh no, I'm stuck on the rock! <laughs> <laughs> Thousand fish in that pond, Rich, and we could not catch one fish. Well, clearly the fish won, Karen. Yeah. Yay, yay, fish. Yay, fish. <laughs> yay, curry. Yay, curry. Let's have a look. So it's really cooked and mellowed here. All right, a little bit of shredded frozen coconut. Instead of adding coconut milk or coconut cream, I'd like to sprinkle a little bit of this in. A little bit of um, rice malt syrup. So what you're doing now, Rich, is just balancing out or rounding out the flavours of the curry, mm. which traditionally a little salty, a little hot, a little sour. So this would have been maybe palm sugar. And a little sweet, yeah. But we're going to use rice malt syrup by Spiral. Now for that salty element, fish sauce. Just and little... sour element. Lime. Lime. OK, I've got all your greens ready, Rich. OK. All right, so I'm going to add beans. my snake beans. Snake beans. beans. Spinach. Spinach. That just goes in. Okay, whole heap of coriander. Okay, that's going to take a few moments just to soften, Karen. Oh, wow. Yeah. Pretty quick. Come right. on, I'm impatient. All right, <laughs> it's a few moments. Let's go. <laughs> OK, so there you have it, Karen. Otway slow-cooked pork neck in a green curry with snake beans and spinach. 
How you going? Hey, <laughs> Robert. I thought I'd drop in for oh. a taste. <laughs> Hello, Look at him. What's, your what's cooking today? Oh. Is <laughs> impeccable, I must say. Well, this is Rich's green curry. Of this pork. is my green pork wow. curry. Yeah, it's a bit hot. Go. With snake beans and mm. spinach. How's that? With the horse like some too. <laughs> <laughs> He's looking at it. It's just magnificent. Oh, I'm Thank glad you, you like much. it. It's an excellent job. It was yeah. a great takeaway. Must go. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> See you, Robert. I cannot say I've ever had a horse Pull and up to a the, <laughs> the tasting table before. <laughs> it's just beautiful. Delicious, Rich. Absolutely delicious. For this recipe and all the ones we do on the series, head to intolerantcooks.com.au. You know, Karen, I get to see Robert now, riding off into the sunset.